In this video, we're looking at the transformation of Ebenezer Scrooge, who is the protagonist in Dickens' much-loved novella A Christmas Carol, so stay tuned. Now, if you've already read the book, you'll know that Scrooge undergoes a massive transformation throughout the course of the narrative. He goes from being a stingy, mingy, penny-pinching grouch of an old man in the first chapter to being a jolly, big-hearted and generous Good Samaritan in the final one. Now, the reason for this radical change is the visitation of the three spirits, with the ghost of Christmas past showing Scrooge his childhood and youth, the ghost of Christmas present showing Scrooge the suffering of the poor and the gap between the haves and the have-nots in society, and finally, the ghost of Christmas future projecting the sad, grim end of a man like Scrooge if he doesn't change his ways. Now, there's lots of quotes to track Scrooge's change throughout the course of the novel, but I've picked out a pair from chapters one and five that I think most strikingly portrays Scrooge's before and after. So here it is. Shortly into the first chapter, we get a taste of Scrooge's unpleasantness in the quote as follows. But he was a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone, Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner. Hard and sharp as flint, from which no steel had ever struck out generous fire. Secret and self-contained and solitary as an oyster. So what can we tell about Mr. Scrooge from this quote? Well, for starters, he's got a hell of a grip on things. And the comparison of him to a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone is an example of a synecdoche, which is the technique of using a part of something to stand in for the whole of that same thing. So Scrooge then is suggested to be uptight and anxious about guarding his possessions, so much so that his entire self here is now reduced to a tight-fisted hand, and one that is at the grindstone, grinding away to sharpen his edges as a way to fend off the others. Next, there is the enumeration of the squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, which is a string of gerund verbs that all connote this idea of holding tight onto things and not letting go, almost to an obsessive extent. This reflects Scrooge's calculating meanness, which we'll very quickly see from the way he treats Bob Cratchit, his clerk, specifically in his not allowing Cratchit more than one piece of coal for warmth at their counting house, and in his snarkiness at Cratchit's request for taking an annual day off for Christmas. This impression of miscellaneous is then reinforced by the simile of Scrooge being hard and sharp as flint from which no steel had ever struck out generous fire which shows him to not just be a miserable miser, but also a harsh and cutting personality. There's one more aspect to his character though, and that is his isolatedness. The other simile of him being solitary as an oyster helps us visualize the closed off, clammed up person that Scrooge is, which is very much like the thick, hard shell of an oyster. Also, the triple alliteration of the siblings in secret and self-contained and solitary creates this impression of a hissing, seething man with a face scrunched up in spite, which is really what happens when we enunciate the S consonant with force. Overall, there is no question that the Scrooge in Chapter 1 is a largely unlikable character. But of course, Scrooge doesn't always stay so unlikable, and in a fairy tale esque transformation, he changes from public enemy number one to the resident philanthropist. And here's a good, easy to remember quote to show this. Why, it's impossible to carry that to Camden Town, said Scrooge to the messenger boy. You must have a cab. The chuckle with which he said this, and the chuckle with which he paid for the turkey, and the chuckle with which he paid for the cab, and the chuckle with which he recompensed the boy, were only to be exceeded by the chuckle with which he sat down breathless in his chair again and chuckled till he cried. Now, the context for this quote is Scrooge's epiphany after the visitation of the three spirits, when he finally realizes the error of his ways and resolves to change for the better. His first remedial action is to buy a turkey and to have it sent over to Bob Cratchit's house in time for the family's Christmas dinner. 
Having done this, Scrooge feels an outpour of joy, which is seen in his doubling up with chuckles in this moment. Now Dickens here uses an aphra by starting four successive clauses with the chuckle or and the chuckle, which highlights the joyous liberation that Scrooge feels as a changed man. This anaphora is layered on top of enumeration, which lists out all the things that Scrooge is now willing to pay for. So he paid for the turkey, he paid for the cab, and he recompensed the boy. This marks a stark contrast from his previous self, who wouldn't have doled out a single penny for anything. The repetition of the word chuckle is then stretched to hyperbolic lengths, when we see Scrooge chuckling so much that he cried. This exercise in generosity then is Scrooge's final catharsis and it liberates him from the bondage of greed and pettiness that has characterised him for most of the novella. So there you have it guys, two effective quotes to show Scrooge's transformation, complete with stylistic analysis. If you found this helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could click the thumbs up button below and subscribe to this channel for more English literature resources down the line. If you want a detailed analysis of The Christmas Carol, you can go ahead and check out the blog post that I've written on this topic, which I'll link in the description box below. But otherwise, I'll see you guys very soon. Ciao!